Welcome, welcome to the Rick Elts Real Estate Show. Right now, we're just trying to keep tabs on the Arizona real estate market because we just don't know where it's going to land. If it's going to keep going up, going sideways, going in circles, we don't know. People are asking all the time, when should I sell? If I want to sell, when should I sell? And basically, I'm saying, well, when are you moving? <laughs> If you're looking for one real estate agent to tell you it's the peak of the market, keep looking. Uh, you'll find one. Will he be right? I don't know. Might be. But it's hard to do. It's hard to tell you when you're at the absolute top of the market and when you're at the absolute bottom. Because in that same question comes the question, Rick, when do you think's a good time to buy? So this market's really unusual. When the first crash that we saw in 2008, Nobody could buy, and there really nobody wanted to buy after the crash. Now, a lot of people hoping for an adjustment, hoping for a crash, and waiting. So that kind of begs the question that if rates come down a little bit, and prior to that, prices come down, is there this wave of people that are going to jump right back in? And I don't know. So I want to look at some of the numbers that we see now, and let's make some assumptions on where we think we're going to be this summer or the end of the summer, what it might mean. And I hope that that helps you with whatever decision it is you're trying to make because, you know, there's a lot of crashers out there and some of these people have been predicting a crash for two years. And, you know, uh, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. So it, uh, it could happen. Uh, but I try not to go out much more than three to six months. But I do like to look at trends. Right now in Bloomberg, housing market fever starts to break in Boise. Everybody was moving to Boise, Idaho. And they quote their Zillow economists a lot in this one, so I take that with a grain of salt. But uh, I say that and I shouldn't. He's way smarter than I am. Is Idaho losing its mojo? Typical home values in Boise rose just 0.4% last month, down from 4.1 monthly pace in June. Kind of sounds like us. We've been rocking at about 4.1. So what's going on? The incredible pace of gains is never going to be sustainable, of course, and that's true of many in the pandemic era miracle markets, even if you're ultimately bullish on their long-term prospects. And we're named as one of those markets, Phoenix, Tampa, Florida, among others. According to Oxford Economics, Boise home prices are now 70% higher than what the medium household income city residents suggested they can afford so the boise residents are getting priced out so but that doesn't mean that prices are going to start to drop many of the buyers are coming from elsewhere including well-paid californians still cashing out on the remote work arbitrage further in the article it said and this is something that i speculated about about two years ago how long will companies want their employees to work from home because i think there's a lot of decisions and a lot of ideas that come at the water cooler and we're starting to see they're starting to pull them in now. Like Apple wants everybody to come back. And there's this big give and take and push and shove. People don't want to come back. They've moved out of state. And uh, so it's going to be an interesting thing to watch this year. Come back. We need you. No, you said I could work from home. I went to Boise. And uh, so it says here, when the momentum turns, it's the expensive category that will get hit first. In other words, San Francisco will probably get hit first if prices start to come down. And when San Francisco get hit, hit then it's kind of a domino effect of other smaller cities. Now, I saw, um, there's actually a video yesterday, an economist, a real estate agent in Toronto talking about how bad the Toronto market is now. Now, it wasn't more than three months ago I read that they had 2,700 listings only in a town of what do they say that's uh, 6.3 million people that's all they had their average home price a million bucks so i looked up some numbers today and they're up 3.6 for the month of april and 11.8 for the quarter so that contradicts what i saw on the news now canada is kind of interesting <clears throat> tell me if i'm wrong if you're from canada but you can't get a 30-year fixed mortgage you can get one that amortizes out that long but your note you have to renegotiate it every five years. You don't have a fixed mortgage for the entire term. And they have about four or five different products that they offer. But at the end of five years, it's always an adjustable rate. So a lot of people in Canada, when they're starting to build a lot of equity and their note is coming due, they usually sell, put their house on the market and then wait and uh, get back in. But um, Canada has a lot of 
ups and downs just like we do. There's arguments on both sides of the fence that their system is better than ours, and we say ours is better than theirs. Quite frankly, I don't know, but that'd make me nervous that my mortgage is going to reset every five years. Yikes. So what's going on here locally? This is what this is why you're here, right? Look at these red numbers. This is the Cromford Market Index, and it's coming down, and it's coming down quick. And Michael Orr, who compiles all this data, said, we need to be watching this carefully the next three or four weeks. That's an ominous statement. Watch it carefully. And he's referring mostly to people that have found themselves overextended and maybe bought a few rental houses. Um, but he said, if you thought last week's table was bad, then this week's much worse. All 17 cities are cooling quickly except Glendale and Goodyear. And I think I touched on this on my Friday Live. Supplies building quickly thanks to plentiful new listings and a major slowdown in homes going under contract. The last six weeks uh, look like the significant turn in the market than we have been anticipating for several years, and there are no obvious upcoming changes expected that would reverse the current train trend. In other words, there's more listings coming on, sales are going down, we don't see anything in front of us that's going to reverse that. So what does that look like? Well, here's where we're at today, 65.22 active listings. This is 2020. We're growing at about 500 listings a week. You put that out about 12 weeks, and that puts us above the 2020 numbers, and it puts us at about 16,000 listings, which is knocking on the basement door of a normal market, which is 27,000 listings. It's certainly at that rate, you would think that we would see some backing off on bidding wars simply because of supply and demand. So that's a possibility. So when you're looking at selling your house um, and you like getting multiple offers, uh, maybe, maybe now's the time. Um, you've got time. They're going up about 500 units a week. It's certainly not time to panic. And quite honestly, at the end of the summer, you know, you might not get multiple offers, but you might get the price that, that your home is worth very easily. The difference is going to be is that we're so used to listing something and we end up with several dozen people that come to our house. Some people offer you um, your asking price before it even hits the market. And we're just used to that speed and that velocity. And now if it takes a week to buy, you know, to sell your house, you're going to think your realtor stinks. And, uh, you know, maybe you priced it too high. Now I had a, and so you chew out your agent. That's what you do. And I had somebody do that to me. They, uh, we priced it and I said, well, you know, we can go ahead and shoot for that price, but we'll have to see what our traffic is like for the weekend. And over the weekend, we had one. We had one person go look at the house. My little dog here is chasing a bone all over the floor there. He's driving me crazy. So we had one person look at the house. I got the living daylights beat out of me in an email and text message from them. You're the worst realtor on the planet. I can't believe it. We've told all our friends to never use you. Uh, in fact, my wife got on a private Facebook group, and she's letting everybody know that you are not the person that we should use. And it was a brutal beatdown. Why? We priced it too high, and nobody was interested. Once we lowered it, we sold it. Sold it quickly. So price is everything in a market where things are changing. What is changing? Well, I showed you this this one here, and it shows that, you know, what if we get back up to 2020 levels? And this is just an assumption. Based on its current rate, let's say here by June 13th, we're going to be at almost 10,000 listings. Well, last year when we got there, uh, prices were going up like crazy, or the year before in 2020. They started climbing. Won't that happen again? Well, doesn't look like it, and here's why. Cromford Index is coming down. This is a demand index, and we're at 100, and 100 is considered balanced. So the buyer demand's going down. But if you look at 2020 in June, right here, look, all of a sudden it just spiked up, and I mean aggressively. This is tracked by week. Boom, 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 boom. So the buyer traffic and demand index was flying off the charts over a two, three week period at a time when we had that many listings. So what happened? The number of listings started going down, down, down. They were getting gobbled up. So if we go up to that period now, I don't see this sliding back down simply because our demand index is down. Now, could it take a turn up? Not if interest rates continue to rise. That's 
the new game changer that we have right now. Supply is coming up slightly, but 500 a week, that's still pretty good. And overall, the market here, the actual market is coming down to 385 with normal being 100. So there's some indicators there that, that as we watch it and we get closer to June, closer to the end of June, I think we're going to have a very clear picture of where the future of real estate is going to be for the third quarter, you know, September, October. And that's that's helpful to know to get some kind of clarity there. Now, are we going to see lower prices? There's there's a lot that has to happen before the actual prices, the contract prices come down. The asking prices, they're already coming down. People that have been baking and baking into the cake that real estate prices are continuing going up, up and up and priced accordingly and weren't worried about appraisals and just were confident they were going to get multiple offers are now facing reality. And the reality is we're getting more inventory, sales are backing off, and it's taking just a little bit longer to sell the home. And after about a week, you see people starting to pull their prices back down. So it's not panic time. I'm not raising the red flag and saying, here we go. But I'm saying, look, the market's changing. It is. And we can see it. We see it in the numbers. We track it here every day. And it's going to be interesting to watch. Um, buyers are out there going, oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, that old boy moment may still be a couple of years out if it shows up at all. I have no prediction on interest rates. Even in a survey that I put on my page, we're all over the map. Some people think it's going to go lower. It's going to go higher. It's going to go way higher. We don't know. And, uh, you know, and I just, I have inherent distrust of politicians. They don't know either. So going to be tough to watch. Not tough to watch. If you like crunching numbers, it's going to be fun to watch. So we'll see what happens. Be sure and hit the like button and subscribe so you can stay on top of these numbers. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.